Welcome everybody to I the Serpent Tarot for another pick a card reading. So today's reading is a bit of a deep and different dive into astrology and how those energies operate for you. And so you know the title of this video is about your unique star map. And what I'm trying to get to with this comes from, as many of you would know, the fact that I grew up with astrologers. So the topic of astrology was very much a core topic in our household. And we got to know our own charts extremely well and those of sort of friends and, and broader family and so forth. And in doing that, one of the things that I observed and used to talk about with my mother and brother, who were the astrologers in the, in the family, was how things that are traditionally called benefic, like Jupiter or Venus or whatever, or traditionally thought of as difficult, like Saturn or Mars sometimes and so forth, it can differ depending upon the person. And... and some of that is what sort of aspects are in your chart, certainly. But there seems to be also something about how we interact with those energies full stop. So to give you an example, I would often find in my life that Venus transits that are normally seen to be benefic and loving and kind didn't necessarily have that impact on my life. And it may be partly because my Venus natally is in a difficult aspect to Saturn. But the interesting thing for me is that Saturn often works really well except for when it's connected with Mars, where I get kind of backache and things like that. So oddly enough, in that particular tussle between Venus and Saturn, it was almost like Saturn won the day for me and tended to be more benefic for me than Venus and so forth. And I think some of that, as I say, is just around the structure of the chart, but I think some of it also has to do with the soul. I think there's probably something quite Saturnian in me, for instance. So... And it occurred to me, and we used to talk about this, that two children born in the same hospital virtually at the same time would have the same chart, but would be likely to grow up and use those energies very differently. And what was the different thing involved in that? The soul, you know, the spark of the soul. And if you do believe in past lives, as I do, the concept is that the soul is a thing that is eternal and passes through a number of incarnations. And those will have different pathways and patterns in your astrology chart, which will reflect to some degree the nature of your soul, but probably in its context of the incarnation that you're in. So I'm trying in this reading to get to something that's more about your soul, that's more about where you are coming from and so forth, and 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 how different aspects might work for you. So interestingly, one of the things we also noticed is that if somebody had a lot of trines in their chart, a lot of the time, you know, that would seem to be a wonderful thing and really easy and so forth, but maybe it's too easy sometimes, unless the soul that has come in is determined to go with the flow but still create, for instance, it could, it could actually become a problem rather than something that is good. So what we're going to look at today is trying to, to find the essence of the soul and using largely astrology-based decks with some other decks thrown in, but, but a very big emphasis on that, and then obviously tarot to give us some extra information about it. But we're looking to see what, what is the soul energy astrologically and in those sort of and, and to some degree things like numerology and, and other sort of inputs to that kind of thing. And we'll look at, at the beginning, what, what is really working well? What are the sort of energies astrologically that tend to work really well for you and why? And then also the ones that might be more challenging, even if it seems counterintuitive, to get that essence of what's the, what's the, the grit in the, the, the oyster that creates the pearl in the challenge? What's, what's the thing that works easily that helps you do that, helps you polish the pearl, for want of a better analogy? So we're going to look at that. We'll have a look at key areas in your life at the moment, again, astrologically, that might be showing those two sides in particular and the bridge between them. And we'll look at tarot to look at what you are conscious of in this soul map, in a sense, or star soul map, and what is operating unconsciously. And then, look, maybe it's some past life influences that have brought to bear on some of this, part of the reason that's it's playing out the way it is and then finish up with some spiritual advice. So I hope that sounds interesting. It's a little bit experimental to get to this, but I think it might get to something really core and could be a really interesting sort of journey to go on. So I hope it intrigues you. If so, I'll put down the numbers for the different decks. So for those who like to choose by numbers, but what I've also done, and this, these cards will be part of this, 
and they will represent an astrological energy in the core thing that is easeful that works for you part of it is chosen out of the Greek mythology cards the some cards that represent asteroids or a planet in astrology and and that particular energy because maybe the image or the concept of it if it's something that you think yes that actually works well for me that might help you choose which deck to go to of course you don't have to use that as a way to choose and of course you can go to more than one reading but I just thought it could be helpful so on pile one we have iris an asteroid that is about messages about inspiration and the psychic and so forth for pile two we have the asteroid chiron which is largely connected with healing pile three we have the asteroid apollo which is highly charismatic and creative and for pile four we have uranus spelt slightly differently for the name that the planet was based after but is picking up in this particular deck that sort of you know the change energy but also the kind of sense of being a bit separate being a bit different being a bit unusual being a bit remote so these are all energies that in various ways could operate very well for you so if you feel that that is something that aligns to you as i say that might draw you towards a a particular pile but that doesn't have to be the reason and you can go to more than one but when you do know what reading or readings you want to go to as always i've got the timestamps in the description box below and i'll see you there welcome pile one to your reading so i'm a little bit little bit sort of challenge for space here so I'll move these cards up a bit more as I talk about them but these cards over here are meant to show us what is in your individual star map really working well for you and over here the areas that might be a challenge things to consider and things that might play out in your sort of day-to-day -day life and in and the transits in your natal chart <clears throat> so starting with over here you came to iris so if that was why you chose this then i think that the, the sort of concept of channeling information spiritual divination uh, having a, a sense of connection to the divine is very strong for you and works very well for you because we've also got metatron here so you have a connection in terms of psychic ability spiritual ability to the 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 top or uppermost point of the Kabbalah which is Keta because Metatron sort of rules over that and is the scribe of the divine so a sense of a, a, a bigger arc to what you do and a narrative to what you do and a connection to the divine is very strong so I would say for you certainly things like the eighth house and the tenth house in your current incarnation your current chart would be very strong and you would be likely to have either planets there or just operate very well when planets are in those spaces even though the 12th may in fact be a little bit of a challenge to you but we'll get to that to why so it may be more around the eighth house that this operates but you're also very good at bringing this into the world you can see and predict destiny with a yod this could very much suggest that there is destiny around your particular incarnation this time and also that your soul has a sense of destiny you have that connection to the divine and also potentially to interdimensional races here with the Lyrans and they're very courageous they're very brave they're cat-like uh, interdimensional beings they don't suffer fools they do have a very strong connection to what is good and they care about what happens in the world and so do you you care about sort of the material matters with the 10th house but certainly there is a sense in you in your star map in who you really are of destiny of that you're here for a purpose that you're channeling for a particular reason and some of that is around healing Chiron is likely to be a asteroid that works very well for you in your chart so if you know your chart where you can be healed you are actually very good at that you have a kind of almost healing energy partly from the capacity to download from the divine and to get inspiration and so forth and I feel there's a healing energy to the earth with you as well too that you have a sense that that is part of your mission to heal the earth the environment something like that so you you work well around any healing modalities and so forth the sixth house is also likely to work quite strongly for you as well too because of the health orientation of the sixth house your sun where your sun is and your sense of self and your sense of purpose is very very strong in in any incarnation you're in you sort of kind of instinctively really know why you're there and what you're doing and what your life path is you're not confused about that sort of thing you don't necessarily even need to see your astrology chart to know it you just know it in, innately and, and through sort of channeling about who you're meant to be in the world 
I don't think for you that's a matter of confusion by and large. You've always had that sense. So if you've come to the right reading, it make, you would say, yes, I've always really known who I was and I've known what I wanted to do. Even from young childhood, this, the sun has been a very strong indication. And I think you would actually very much align with your sun sign. You may, in fact, have other planets in your chart that are in the same sign as your sun, but it's certainly part of who you are. You may have the sun in the first house for this reason or potentially in the 10th house because your self in the outer world and how you project yourself in the outer world is, is very much key to your destiny. And you're very aligned to that. The person that you show through your career, through your sense of of the powers of the world, politics of the world and so forth, is very aligned to your life path, is very clear and has this healing energy to it. So your soul knows who they are. Your soul knows how to manifest that in the world. Any planets in the 10th house are likely to work well for you. The sign that's in the 10th house is likely to be a positive sign for you. So whenever it's in that season. So if you had Libra in the 10th house, for instance, when we're in Libra season, that's likely to work very well for you. But to some degree, because you're so clear on who you are, it almost doesn't matter. But you are going to do something in the 10th house. Part of your soul's purpose at least in recent incarnations and going forward, is about doing something in, in the material world and something about healing the powers of the world. So anything in that space works very positively for you. What is a challenge for you, though, interestingly enough, is how you own that power. Because we have Zeus over here. So over here, you know who you are and how you fit into the powers of the world. But I think that a challenge for you might somewhat sometimes be between Mars and Venus. And the reason I say that is I feel like Zeus... The energy of this almost represents Mars in a way. And then we have the Vesica Pisces, which is the ultimate feminine energy operating here. So some of what you maybe struggle with in living out your sort of healing, but also powerful energy and the vision that you have is how you balance your will to power and your will to receive. And, and it's interesting because it makes you on a spiritual level it, you are probably very, very prone to the dark night of the soul, for instance, and for needing to kind of connect out to, say, Raziel for the kind of Christ's love, the sort of mystical love, the, the Neptunian sort of energy. Neptune may for you be a bit tricky. It may be around the Neptunian sort of energies of the ideals against what are the realities of power and, and re receptivity it may be a bit of a challenge for you. And letting go of old patterns could be with the fixed fixed signs any of the fixed signs could be a tricky thing for you in the sense that you might get stuck you might get stuck in trying to balance this energy so although you have this destiny you know who you are in really getting it into balance within yourself that might be more of a challenge and letting go with the last quarter moon of what hasn't worked it's it's almost like because of Chiron here wanting to heal the last and that and that kind of the generosity of Raziel there and the caring energy of the Vesica Pisces it's like you don't want to leave anybody behind and but sometimes the energy of your destiny takes you further and makes you need to make those sort of decisions and things around the 12th house so things around what you want to keep private could be a little bit of a challenge. And I think it's because your soul is drawn towards being seen in the world. So working out that balance of your power and your receptivity and what you can keep private with the 12th house is, is a tricky thing for you. And in fact, it may be that sometimes you appear to be letting go of things, but in actual fact, privately, you haven't done it. So issues around sort of psychological issues around sort of addictions and so forth. And I don't mean that necessarily physically. I mean that more like kind of really being caught and fixed on ideas. You may not necessarily show that, but it's hard for you to let go. Three is also about community. And so that's the other sort of challenge for you, community and collaboration, because there is a lot of power. There's a lot of self-directed power in your soul. And you are trying to get that into balance. But things around groups, around you know the threes that are in the tarot deck, so the celebration of the three of cups, the, the emotional pain of not wanting to let go of the three of swords, the, the three of wands being sort of like what is your direction and what is, is a group's direction, and the three of pentacles, how do you sort of like, how fixed can you get on what you've already done? You know, how 
flexible can you be? There's something like that for you. So I think that that you you operate sort of astrologically largely in a very forward moving I'm on my life path. I will I will do something in the world. I will heal things in the world. I will channel this information in. That all works very well. But when you find yourself in that position of power, which I think you do, or in or in struggles around power, it can be difficult for you to to let go of the argument, to let go of the energies, and to move on. So you know, if I had to sort of give you a sort of intuitive analogy, I would be saying that it's like you over here you have potentially the wisdom of a serpent the wisdom of being able to know who you are and the direction that you're going in but you have a little bit of trouble shedding your skin when something hasn't worked out and and maybe one of the things is that there is so much that comes to you really differentiating what is going to work for you and what is is almost extraneous and this is picking up neptune so telling the difference between true channeled information and what is delusion may be one of your challenges that you need to deal with so let's use another astrology deck and i'm going to just pull a card for the area or some other energy that's working in your life the challenge and then what could be a bridge between it so a little bit more information on what's working in your individual star map the second house. So you've got the second house and the tenth house. So the things that are your values, the things that make you money, you would make money fairly easily or you know, if you haven't already, you're going to find that you will once you really start to see what your life path is. That's all easy. Like the stuff around the material world is, is easy, but also it does need to fit with your values and you seem to be able to connect those two together. Over on the challenge side, we have Scorpio. Yeah, it's all the depth stuff. You're very, you're very kind of uh, information coming in, very of the mind, and to some degree, you know, having to work out what is of the mind and what is sort of a little bit more illusory. But you're very much about that and creating a life path and moving forward and manifesting in the world. That's part of who you are, and that works very, very well. But when you have to start to question yourself about the internal dynamics of power within you, how to collaborate with others and scorpio is one of the big star, uh, big big signs so like that kind of depth level on the 12th house of like you know what you hide and what you keep private this is this is a challenge for you and scorpionic issues are a challenge for you so it is potentially a little bit addictive with that sort of energy as i say it doesn't have to be and i'm not suggesting kind of physical addictions i'm thinking more emotional emotional addictions and not wanting to let go yeah, you, know, you could have with the 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 Chiron energy, always wanting to heal everybody, but some people you're not going to be able to heal. So let's see what the bridging energy is for you, pile one, the fifth house. Okay, so it's got to do with connection with others and creativity, but I think it's largely about love. I think that where you can maybe start to deal with the energies around the sort of Mars Venus energy, the sort of love energy, and what it is that you want to to reach out for and connect to as opposed to sort of stay hidden from that's the bridge it's finding the right partner it's finding the right romance all of that kind of thing you are a little bit to you and i don't mean that in that you're selfish or you're egotistical that's not really the energy of this but you are so focused and you do worry about being wrong and you don't necessarily always feel comfortable looking into the depths of yourself around that but i think that a relationship a partner or a collaboration creatively is something that can help you deal with some of these issues and let go of what isn't working and move into into more of what your destiny is so let's look with tarot so we're going to ask firstly around what you're really conscious of in this star map so if we're, we're talking about as i say your soul star map what really does kind of resonate in both those both the challenge and the and the and the good sort of energy what you're aware of and what spirit would say about that and then we'll ask about what you're unconscious of but which maybe is really driving things until you bring it to conscious awareness so firstly what is pile one aware of what is their soul aware of Okay, 
So I think you kind of know that you have an issue about being one or two people, like all on your own or with others, particularly creatively, passionately, that sort of thing. I think you are very aware of this sort of like Mars, Venus, divine masculine, divine feminine sort of balance that's a little bit tricky for you in your chart or in your life in general. So you do know that there is a part of you that is very much sort of creatively and sort of ambitiously directed towards this, this destiny that you know that you have. But you also know that you can't do it all alone. And that's where your challenge is coming up because you're very comfortable doing things for yourself and being independent, like really independent. But the energy around others, you know that you need to, to free yourself from some of your kind of intellectual concern about that. And you need to free yourself from a feeling that that could dim your light somehow, that, that in, and that you would be less of a star if, in fact, you know, other people were part of this. Or you had to sort of say, oh, I was wrong about something. I need to move forward. Some of you may be so strong in what you believe and what you do that, that people look to you and they learn from you, for instance. And then if you had to sort of turn around and say, well, I've actually reconsidered this and now I don't think the same way, you may feel that that dims your light a bit. So you're, you're aware of the kind of the balance between the individual and the collective that, that you're trying to sort through. And you're also aware that you're capable of doing it. Like you do know on, on a kind of spiritual level and skill level that you can do it. I think you're just a little bit concerned about, or a little bit stubborn about letting go of certain things or, or saying, you know, how do I, how do I do that to get that more in balance? And it could, the magician again, you know, it's, it's, you know, the, the first card after the fool, it's again, very much on their own, very individual. So you, you're kind of very much in that space, the sort of like spiritually and, and, and technically advanced and creatively very driven, but you do know there's something in all of this. So let's ask what you don't know, what you're not seeing at the moment around your, your soul's star map. Okay, so what you don't know, firstly, is that by connecting with others, this is the three. Three is difficult for you, remember I said. So the three of wands, the, the sense of like the collaborative effort that, that it's not just one person directed is difficult for you. But the rewards are extraordinary if you do it with the six of wands. You will actually be recognized more. If you're used to being an expert in something and sort of like really just always being directed and clear and having the information and having the success and making the money and doing all those things. And you think, you know, if I, if I sort of like start listening to everybody else or whatever, that's going to diminish. The actual fact is that, that it won't, that it will actually become exponential. You could turn the three energy in this time, the three energy around creativity and ambition to work for you. There, there, there is a challenge for you around, power and so forth but this is a challenge you're meant to be able to sort of meet and understand and bring into balance in this life I think it's part of your soul's journey because what you don't know is how much you've cost yourself emotionally with this there are probably some really good options for great sort of emotional family sort of connection so forth you may even have felt a bit distant from your family because you were so different and so directed and so forth but again we've got the three reversed here you, you're not there's something about the number three with you. There's something about that sort of sense of foundation and what the foundation is. And I think some of it might even be the reluctance to let go of foundation when it's in place. So it's sort of like there's a reluctance to reach out and connect with others because it's your creative vision. But on the other hand, if you started to build something, there's a reluctance to let it go. There's a feeling that you will lose too much emotionally. But Spirit is saying what you don't know is that you can actually be very pragmatic about this. You're getting the information that you need. You're able to create. If you let something go that didn't work, you'd bring in something else that worked because your, your pattern is towards success and material success in the world. But you may be making it harder for yourself than you need to, I think, is what this is basically saying. So let's have a look at some past life energy that could be impacting on this. So we're just going to like pull a number of cards from a past life deck that could give anything from civilizations to experiences to roles. So I'm just trying to look for something that might 
explain the trajectory now into your life of this soul, this soul that is so singular, so creative, so on point intellectually and, and, and in terms of you know the magician being able to bring in that being, but may, may by virtue of that, not be fully balanced in how to connect with other people and get the true value of collaboration. So let's see if there's any past life experiences that had something to do with that. And this one flew out, so I'll just put that down. Okay, there's a lot of warrior Mars energy for you. So I think Zeus is at this point in time, so the Mars energy in your chart and so forth, what you've brought in from past incarnations is probably overruling the, the, the Venus, the receptivity. And this is where the connection issue is coming up because it's sort of like the will to power, the will to succeed, the will to be self. And I think to go for a cause, you're not doing this because you're selfish. You're doing it because you think you have a higher order cause and you want to heal something. So a warrior and a knight are both looking after the land, the people of their particular culture and so forth. So there's a very strong energy around you put the cause and, and all of that before everything, which also makes it hard to let go when something hasn't worked because a knight does not want to put down his sword. A warrior does not want to put down, in this case, the, the samurai sword, but th there is a sense of like, I am in the fight and I am moving forward and I am the person to do it. And it's true, you actually are, but it's it's what other areas of your life are becoming difficult. And it may well have been difficult around love and courtship before. Again, if you were a knight or a warrior, you'd be off traveling a lot. Even a merchant trader may not have been home all that often. So I think there's a sense of you've always been the kind of the person who was on the move and the person who was always heading towards destiny. Did you sacrifice some of this? Because we've got Mayan civilization. Now, you may very well have lived in the Mayan civilization, but if not, both the Mayan and the Aztec civilization were known for sacrifice. So I'm feeling that this is actually allegorical. It's like love and courtship may have been routinely sacrificed because you were on a mission but that then means what operates in your chart as i say venus probably has a harder time than mars for instance and letting go of things and letting go of causes you know like that tenacity so that you can let other things in and let other people in may be difficult okay so let's then have a look at some astrology now using a different astrology deck that spirit would say might help you to bridge this. And I do think it's about love. I think it's about a loving connection that brings you into balance and being aware that you have these sort of tricky things around your energy. You know, and so therefore putting some of this great sort of manifestation sort of focus into finding love could be the key. But let's see what else Spirit wants to say astrologically in this life that could be helpful for you. Chiron. So we've got Chiron again. So the, the healing aspect that you do for the world and for your destiny, you could also apply to yourself. Use the same sort of principles as basically being said here. First house. Cancer. Okay. Conjunction. Yeah. Coming together with others. We'll have a look at the planets and fire so spirit is saying you don't have to lose the mars you don't have to lose that energy you don't have to lose any of that because that's part of your destiny but it is about connecting with at least one other key person in this life and that's probably romantically but it could also be sort of in business or something like that there's a family kind of connection as well too i do think for some of you that you were very different to your family but i think that once you're sort of in a family you'll be very very protective of them that warrior spirit comes out on that level but your self as a healer so this chiron energy is very key to you that's what you need to apply to yourself basically let's have a look at conjunction it can sometimes be a tricky energy and sometimes a really great energy it depends on what planets we're talking about So Mars, okay, Mars again, wow. You're very, very much the warrior. Mars and Uranus, yeah, okay. So you're always in a cause, you're always in a fight. 
and and it is it is an issue around bringing that sort of romance and love in because it's almost as though if you felt unsettled around that and and felt like you were being taken off course you'd sort of revolutionize it and be aggressive and so forth you know when you really just want to be assertive so that you really do need to understand the strength of your energy and the strength of your leadership and so forth but you need to kind of dial it back i think a bit you know because there's a lot of almost combustible energy there so you may find that that kind of comes out in your personal relationships when you don't necessarily want it to and some of that i think is you protecting yourself from the loss or sacrifice of love by always being in the battle so so there's something about your warrior spirit here so let's then ask <clears throat> for just some advice from spirit to finish off about how to how to get this into balance because really you do have the capacity to heal yourself it's part of who you are and and many of you may in fact be in healing sort of work and so forth and make money out of healing but it's sort of physician heal thyself energy operating here so let's let's get some advice from a couple of other decks around spiritual energy bondage because yeah, you're you're it's you've bound yourself up you know this and you can heal it but but there is definitely that energy around you change yeah change your your sort of fixed nature the fact that you won't let go the fact that you don't necessarily want other people to to you know to be relying on other people like that that puts you in bondage you need to change that energy very much because then you're going to succeed more at what your soul is really trying to do and it will be more pleasant for you let's get another deck for some other advice for you ether guardian okay all right okay inertia yin so the yin side of you is not the most active side the, the 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 divine feminine side is not the most active side there is a need to sort of shift and change that energy definitely but spirit is saying that you know in the ether in your connection to the other worlds to all of that sort of thing you have the answers that you need and you also have the guides that you need so you're very capable of doing this i just think that that you chose this sort of like warrior i'm on a mission type of energy because it works very easily with your soul and it was almost like okay the sacrifice is love but this is trying to say that you shouldn't do that this time around that you're getting yourself out of balance and and to to get back into balance is to understand that is your challenge and your your divine spark part of the divine the incredible strength of your direction and your knowledge and your capacity and indeed the guides that are around you could could isolate you a bit so i think it's just don't look at that side change and understand that side because i think there's meant to be a relationship for you in this life and if you are in one and you're feeling a bit distant from it you're meant to connect more so as a final message we're just going to go to the the lantern path deck to see what light light in this sort of like starry night can actually help you to get the most out of your unique star map pile one enough you were born enough okay so this tells me that yes there's something like from childhood or from early education or early sort of career or something where you weren't made to feel enough so you basically you're very fixed on achievement now and you are going to you are going to achieve because you have everything in your soul to achieve there's no doubt about that and anybody who thought you weren't enough was an idiot to be frank but you it's so focused on that now and it's maybe if you didn't get the support or nourishment in your childhood that you deserved or in the early years that you deserved then that might be why you're going i'm going to do it all on my own too i'm going to prove it so there's something in your soul which which either in this life or in other lives or in both has been a bit wounded around whether you know your your real strength was going to be seen recognized and allowed and i do believe it is going to be in this life you you do have ease around all of that but but that kind of i'm going to do it and i'm enough and i don't need anything else is just throwing the other side of you a bit out of balance so i hope that that 
resonates for you, Pile 1, and I hope that it's helpful because I do think it's just a slight change, but you just need to move out of some of this fixed energy and hiding these sort of emotions away. And I do think there's a relationship to, to help you do that. If you don't have it now, it's coming in, but you need to be open to it. I hope that that resonates as I say. I hope you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like the video and subscribe. And if you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear about it. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings. Welcome, Pile 2, to your reading. See, I'm a little bit, little bit sort of cramped for space here, so I'll move some of these cards up to show them more clearly as I go along. But this is meant to be a kind of an, an outline of your unique soul star map with what really works well for you and then what is maybe more challenging within your soul star map. So you chose Chiron as an asteroid to come to this reading, or you possibly may have been drawn to it for other reasons. But in any case, that energy is certainly around healing. And I think because it's, it's meant to be operating here positively, your capacity to heal yourself and others is very strong. And wherever you have Chiron in your chart, it's likely to be quite beneficent if you actually know where it is in your chart. You're likely to work very well with that energy and it will heighten whatever sign or whatever house it's in as well too is it's a place where healing can occur and partly this is because you have a deep understanding of things you can actually bring structure to things with saturn with zapkael here there is a a sense of you're prepared to look at the truth of things and the longer term impacts with the vegans as a sort of interdimensional race connection around what is material what is health wise and so forth some of you may be in the area of health or healing in some way in your career. If not, there is an element of that that you bring to it, an understanding of what makes for a healthy workplace, a healthy business, those sorts of things. You are very much actually about the structures of the world and the making of money and being very hardworking. You are very, very comfortable with working very hard for what you want and consolidating your skills and consolidating your sort of financial outcome. So that works well for you. The eighth house is possibly also very well aspected for you. So psychic sort of things, occult things, and intimacy and so forth, though there is a little bit of an issue over here around this, so I think this plays out more around career than anything. But you you certainly have that kind of connection to the eighth house as well too, and the sort of financial security of the number eight. Your south node and north node are working well for you too. You are well aligned to your karmic journey. I have a theory that where you have your south node sign and house in particular is what you've come from in your most recent life and where your north node is house in particular but also sign tells you something about what you're preparing for in the next life it's why you yearn towards the north node you are well aligned to that and will probably establish quite a lot of what your north node is wanting even in this life you are prepared to put the work in to do it some people with the north node they yearn for something, but it doesn't seem to occur. I think that you will get somewhere with what you're trying to achieve with your North Node. So, And if you don't know what that is in your chart, it's, it's something that you really yearn for. It's something that you're really trying to direct yourself towards. So if, for instance, you were wanting to have a very healthy, healed set of relationships and work life, then you are likely to be connecting to a North Node that supports that sort of thing. So it could be in the sixth house, potentially, or... It could be in one of the earth signs. But you are you are good at that. You are very much aligned to your soul's journey. And you kind of understand on an instinctive level what is going on with that. And you work very well with it. You're also able to, with the full moon, bring in your harvest. And that also goes with the eight. So you are likely to be quite successful in things in your life. You are likely to be able to sort of grow and have abundance and manifest and so forth. And create with Taurus the good life, you know, in one form, whatever that means to you. And and to sort of have that sense of in the earth and of the earth, and I feel comfortable there. Earth signs are likely to be very strong for you in your chart, or that earthy energy works well for you. So when, when Taurus season is around, things are likely to work well for you and so forth. But you are very much able to do the work, bring in the rewards and keep yourself on your life path but it has something to do with healing yourself, healing the earth, all of those sorts of things, and you're understanding your capacity with Saturn to put the hard work in. So that's not hard to you at all. You, are, you really understand what you put in, you get out of it. 
Where it can be tricky is maybe sometimes around relationships. Penelope was Odysseus's wife, and so she had to kind of keep the home fires burning while he was off being a hero all over the shop. So basically there could be an issue where you may be are a little bit self-sacrificing around relationships sometimes, or you may feel that you are having to put in a lot of the sort of commitment and energy to relationships. And I think for you, that may play out romantically, but it's just as likely to play out, I think, around an awakening. Well, it could be relationship with Venus with Hannah L. So something around relationships and love might trigger in you that sense of where is it your effort and where is the effort needed to be returned. But I also think around career, because although I think you're going to manifest and really do very well, with reptilians here, it feels like there's an imbalance of power. It feels as though you might be, you might find yourself, your soul is such because it is so hard working and so clear on what it's trying to do and so happy to put in the hard yards that others take advantage of that. So controlling energies, whether it's around personal relationships or career, might be an area that you need to look at. And I'm getting a sense of scorpionic energy around the reptilian stuff there, lower, lower level scorpionic energy. So, and it's hard for you to some degree because you care about relationships a lot with the seventh house, you know, and you are very loyal to them. This loyalty energy and the love that's around it for you, even in a workplace, you care about the people that you're working with to fully articulate with the third house what you want to do. You, you have a sense with the midheaven about why you should be in your career, but I think that you find it hard to articulate what you want around that. You feel like you need to be Aquarius here. You need to be more around the big picture issues and less about yourself. And so I think that one of the struggles for your soul is that you maybe should be a leader, you should be moving up the ladder, you should be achieving all your career aims. And you will achieve quite a bit, but you could maybe achieve more except that you probably let or you know have around you energies that are more controlling and that you're part of this journey is to learn to speak out about your sense of self in the world and what you're trying to do as opposed to keeping the peace in relationships or the career or something like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a different astrology deck to get an astrology energy for what's working, what isn't, and the bridge. Like what, what could in, in this life, if this is a bit of a map of a longer term soul development that you have, what could be in this life, some of the areas to focus on astrologically to help you. So Scorpio in what's working. The fifth house in what's the challenge yeah it's around it is around love probably though i do think it, it bleeds into into career as well and chiron so your healing ability is part of what will actually heal this situation so so scorpio here you can go to the depths you can really understand something scorpio is tenacious too scorpio doesn't give up and so there, and there is a real key understanding of where you're, you're heading. And it's interesting, too, that we've got Scorpio here and we've got Taurus, and they are, in fact, opposite each other. So some of you may have South or North Node in Taurus and Scorpio, potentially. But that same axis of what you're moving from and moving towards is shown up here. So there's an energy around Scorpionic things that work well for you, Scorpio season, and Taurus as well. And... I think that the nodes at the moment, when I'm recording this, this is a timeless reading, so it may not be the case if you see this a lot later, but when I'm recording this, the, we are in a cycle of North Node and South Node in, in Taurus and Scorpio. So, so there's something very immediate, if that's the case, if we're still in that sort of season when you see this, that is going to work very well for you. And it's got something to do with this healing ability that you have. This is the thing that, that get, connects, and maybe through a relationship, it may be that you're awakening to the fact that you give more, particularly around career and everything, than you are getting back and you're putting too much in comes from a relationship. So it may be, and it doesn't have to be a love relationship. It could be a creative type of relationship. It could even be having children and then saying, I need a work-life ba balance, thank you very much. And yes, I can put in the hard yards, but I also need to have the harvest of my child. That could also be triggering it. But something around finding the healing energy and knowing what it is that is making you feel that you always have to put in all the effort and sometimes people around you are not reciprocating and how to be able to articulate that is is the key thing here 
So let's have a look with astrology around what you do and, and don't realize about this. And then we're going to have a look at what past life energy might be informing some of this. So firstly, we're asking what, you're, what you are really aware of in this sort of like more deep soul map and how that works for you. Okay, so you are aware of your capacity to sort of bring the new in and to sort of bring it to harvest, you know, to take it from the ace through to the ten and even the court cards. You know that you can create in the material world, definitely. You also know that you have the skills, but I think that you're kind of not as reliant on them now. It's sort of like you've, you've reached a point where it's more natural to you and you can be more innovative, so you know that. And as I say, eights work well for you. So, so even though this is reversed, I think it's more around instead of like learning and, and developing skills, it's showing that you've got to the point where you can do things differently and break the rules to some degree, sort of separate out from with the, the three of swords here, the kind of intellectual chains that can be around things sometimes or the rules of the environment that you're in. So you know that, that you have a certain liberation because of your capacity to produce. It's almost like there's an aha moment that says, you know, I've been working really hard for potentially draconian sort of bosses. Actually, I could be a boss. I could run my own business. I could do that. You know, I, I'm actually more the innovator and, and a skilled person than, than in fact the people who I'm being sort of managed by, for instance. Or it could be that starting sort of a new family or a new relationship, a new connection, you know, a new direction with somebody makes you realize that you can separate out from all the sort of effort that you were putting in before because you're in a strong position. So you know your strength. You know that you can actually do this stuff. It's, it's more should you do it or should you separate out sometimes, particularly where there isn't the, the kind of reciprocal sort of material energy coming back in your direction. So let's see what you don't know in relation to this, what's sort of potentially unconscious in your soul's map, your soul's star map, that knowing about it might be helpful. Okay. So firstly... You haven't fully understood how skilled you are. You're getting there, but you haven't fully understood that you've gone through the full cycle of fool to the world. And with the fool reverse now, you're sort of at a point where you've kind of got, you've lost the innocence and you know how to move forward. It, it's coming towards you, though, with the moon reverse. You're starting to get information. You're going to get more and more of a feeling about what's going on over in this side. There's, it, it feels like there's a pressure around a relationship, around a work environment. I think for most of you are around work, but it could be around a relationship too. And it could be, in fact, a very good relationship that brings this pressure and brings it to the surface. Or it could be a relationship that you actually need to shift from because it's manifesting some of this sort of kind of exploitative energy. So it depends on, on you know, how this is, is playing out for you at the moment. But certainly you don't, this will sound really sort of basic, but you don't know what you don't know at the moment with the moon reverse. So it's like there is some other information and, and enlightenment that is coming through for you. And there's an awakening energy, remember here. So you need to be open to allowing that to happen. So, you know, you've got the understanding. Understanding is coming for for you but then awakening taking it to that level where you really fully understand what that means on a pragmatic level and it's going to potentially put you off course at least initially but ultimately take you to being much more actualized much more strong in yourself Penelope in a way is like the queen of pentacles and the queen of pentacles is a great card you know very very sort of self-made person you know very sort of like loyal very committed or whatever this is the Queen of Wands. So what you don't know is your creative potential, your passionate potential, because you've been so much about being the sort of loyal person who does the work, who gets the results, who's committed. You, your heart opens in some way through a relationship or even just a relationship with yourself to understand that you're also the Queen of Wands. But it's like it, it, the aha moment hasn't quite happened yet, but it's coming. And who knows, maybe even this reading will help a bit. 
Let's have a look with a, a deck around what past life energy, recent past life energy might be playing out in this particular part of your soul map. So I'll be looking maybe for literal things, but also for things that are allegorical with this. Angelic. Pilgrimage. Transportation. Warrior. That came up for another reading. As did that. Merchant trader. Okay. So I feel when I see like warrior... That's sort of the person who feels that they're always on a mission and so forth and need to sort of like turn up and just be there and be loyal and all that kind of stuff, picking up the Penelope level. I also think there's a lot of movement around what you've done. I feel like in past lives you've, you've been a lot around industries and work and lifestyles where the new was being brought in, where there was a lot of travel, where it was sort of like new areas that had to be found. So it might have been hard. Maybe one of the reasons why you're sort of dealing with and having trouble around whether you're too committed now is it's a sort of a shadow energy of this. You want you want stability. You want to have somewhere that you can sort of ground yourself because maybe the energy of past lives was really about change. But what that's maybe doing is making you too committed. And so that's how people can actually take advantage. You need to maybe waken up again, awaken some of that energy. Of, I'll move on if I need to. Remember that you work well with the South and the North Node. You actually work really well with transmuting the energy of the past and moving forward. It's just that I think that in the past, you just it was hard to feel at home. It was hard to feel grounded. And so you've put a lot of store by that in this life. With the angelic energy, you could have had sort of spiritual sort of experiences, connections to the angelic realms. And I think it's also saying that there's something around the sort of understanding and awakening energy that comes from seeing this pattern that, that of a much more peripatetic sort of lifestyle that you had before and how that's playing out for issues for you around maybe over committing sometimes. Okay, so let's have a look with some other astrology energy from another deck. I said this is going to be a very astrology strong reading. And this is this is looking at what astrology energy could work for you. So if that's the past energy coming in, what astrology energy in your, in your natal chart at the moment or what's going on more generally energetically could be really helpful for you in, in sort of balancing the more challenging aspects and so thereby getting even more from what is easier for you or more natural to you. Seventh house. So again, there's something about a relationship for you moon and there's something about emotional issues coming to the surface as well trine it's going to be easier than you think we'll have a look at the planets around that waxing gibbous you know clarifying your direction and intention yeah what do you want because you really actually would be good at this with the south and north node as i say you really would be good at clarifying your intention you've just got to back yourself that that matters as much as everybody else you're looking after and the South Node, yeah, let go of some of this past stuff. Understand the implications of the past. That's important. I also think there's maybe a past life connection in terms of relationship coming in to sort of help with that if you aren't already in it. Let's have a look at the planets around the trine. Mars, so yeah, the amount of work, ambition, energy you put into things, Mars and Uranus, that's interesting, that came up, and I did shuffle these a lot, so that, that came up in another reading, so again, it's got to do with sort of power issues, but you, you gaining your power in this case, because it's a trine, and ch making the changes that you need will be easier than you think, so if this reptilian energy makes you feel like you're up against the powers of the world, or controlling people you've actually got all that you need and potentially as I say with maybe a partner really able to sort of break through that and set your intentions and use your energy for something that is revolutionary for you not just for everybody else okay so we're just going to use three other decks for some spiritual advice for you to close out the reading so firstly a couple of cards from the golden path so your journey and your pathway Cooperation. Timeless Earth. Okay. So you are good at cooperation and part of the healing energy and so forth will be in cooperation, will be in relationship or so forth. It is actually 
getting that in balance, but you have a great deal of caring for the earth. And Spirit is saying that is worth continuing with. So your loyalty should be that to be that. It should be towards the sort of material, the good life, the sharing of resources, the environmentally uh, sustainable, the healing and so forth. If you, if you focus on that and then you bring the cooperation in rather than you just doing everything, that's, that's how you start to shift that energy. Okay, using a different deck. Cycle, siren, blue moon. Okay, so the blue moon says to me that there's an opportunity or a chance coming up that, that you know doesn't come up all that often. So I think it's just a sort of sign to, to keep an eye out. There may be, it could be the relationship coming in, it could be an op opportunity to heal some of this, it could be a new job offer, it could be a, a chance to sort of move in some way where you felt a bit stuck and to realign this, but it's definitely coming. And you are drawing it in because there's something very attractive about what you have to offer in the world and very attractive about you. Looking at this as a cycle, looking at this as it's almost inevitable for a soul like yours, which is very dedicated to, to others and to good outcomes and to good life and all that kind of thing, that occasionally in the cycle you're going to come across these sort of energies looking at this as a growth opportunity to learn how to speak your truth and to and to connect to those that are healthy for you to connect to when you draw a lot of energy in is a way of getting this into balance i think so lastly we're just going to get a card from the lantern path so we had the gold path and now we've got the lantern path so a light in the starry night for you to to help with balancing what you're extremely good at and, and works well for you astrologically and your, your soul star map, but also what's a challenge for you. Strength of vulnerability. So, okay, this is, this is, you are stronger than you think and being vulnerable emotionally and in a relationship and allowing that in rather than thinking this dynamic is coming in, I think is going to be part of it. But vulnerability is also about letting go and saying, I can't do everything. You know, I, I need to articulate what I need. I need to bring those sort of energies in. I need to the awakening that says, I don't have to be the problem solver of everything. Allow yourself to be vulnerable and to be strong in that way. It allows the right people to connect with you and it makes it harder for those that would exploit you to continue to do so. So I hope that that was helpful, Paul, too. I hope you enjoyed the reading. Realize that that was out of focus all the way through, but it's part two. I hope you enjoyed the reading, and if so, please like the video and subscribe. And if you care to share about it in the comments, I'd love to hear. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings. Welcome, part three, to your reading. So you can see I'm a little bit challenged for space here, so I'll move some of these cards up as I talk about them. But just to let you know, this first side is around what in your soul star map works really well for you sort of astrologically numerologically spiritually that kind of thing and then this is where the challenge may be where there are things you know that that might aspect in your your natal chart in your life here or more generally in your soul's evolution that could be a challenge for you and for you i think that there is this sort of incredible explosive growth of creative brilliance compared to the sense of sometimes being at the the hostage of fate and of time and of things like that. So, and and between wanting to be almost the sort of the, the divine masculine creativity on that level, being out in the world and so forth, being a change agent and all of those sort of things, but also being able to, to be soft when sometimes you feel the world that you're in or the universe that you're in potentially is, is very power oriented or tough. So why I say this, we start with Apollo, which is possibly what brought you to the reading, but in any case is an important part of what works very well for you. So if you knew your astrology chart and you knew where Apollo was in it, that probably works very well for you. Aspects to Apollo probably work very well for you and so forth. But it's all about creativity. Apollo was the god of light, truly creative, truly charismatic. Connected here with Uriel, creativity is sort of like made exponential and very much around Uranian energy. So change, the new, the electric, the different. You are very much that person who brings in the new and you find it very easy to be inspired. People probably a bit in awe of you. You're probably someone who, if you wanted to sort of 
I don't know, write a song, you'd do it in 10 minutes. You know, everybody else would be still trying, you know, three hours later and you, you'd already had it done. It's You are inspiring on that level. And you do draw love to you because of your creativity and your charisma. Like you find it easy and you do love, you love genuinely and you find it easy to draw that kind of love energy in for you. But, and, and you are a master at what you do with the 33. 33 is a master number. And, and so it is, you are a master at your creative arts. You've brought that in with your soul. It's, it's part of who you are. So any sort of astrological elements that are around that. And I'm just realizing you probably can't see that at all, but that's Alpha Draconian. So we'll get to that. And start, sorry for the ring light. We'll just move it down so you can see it a bit more. So I just want to shift the angle of this. There we go. That's probably better. I think the camera moved. So you are very much that and and you take challenges extremely well with the Grand Cross, which is you know a sort of series of kind of connections of squares that, and oppositions that cause amongst planets a sort of a, a kind of divine tension. You work very well with that. The more that you are under pressure to create something, the more that you're going to do it really quickly. The more that there is a, a big problem to solve, the more you will have divine inspiration. You, you deal very well with pressure. That's not a problem for you at all. And any of the sort of like squares within your natal chart or oppositions within your natal chart, even if they technically look like they should be difficult, you will probably thrive with them more than the average person. And it's partly, as I say, because of your mastery. You also deal very well with others and with community, with six here. So you, you know how to be the inspiration and how to draw in love, but you also know when to collaborate. But it is all about change. It is all about the new. You would get bored very easily if you were caught in something very traditional. So I don't think that, that this is a star map that suits someone who would say be in an office job for instance for you know 20 years of their lives you could certainly work in an office but you need to be doing something creative what is a challenge for you is because of this incredible change energy because of this incredible speed of creativity that you have and you know your capacity to draw in what you love and all of those sort of things like you are a real master at this time and the powers of the world are things that are a trick, you know, and fate. So the Horai are about time and about the fates and so forth. So where you can't be the master of your destiny, where you can't create everything, where it can't be on your time scale, you find that frustrating and you think there's a lot in the powers of the world with Alfred Aconians here that get in the way of this creative purity. So if you were a songwriter or something, you would get frustrated with the rules of the industry, for instance, and the time it takes. If you're a writer, you know, like... The creative download of the book might be amazing and quick, but then just the time it takes to get published is, is not something that sits very easily with you. And just taking time out and, and meditating and being calmer within that energy, it's not, it, you are very action oriented, you are very inspirational, you're very sort of air and fire. The sort of concept of like the more grounded sort of energy that comes from meditation and the Saturnian energy with Zafkael, which takes time. It just drives you bonkers, basically. <laughs> the other thing that you find tricky is around how you make something consolidate. And and, and it's, so you're more about the creation than the, than the consolidation of it. So you'd be very good going in and being a change agent in an organization, not necessarily so happy then with kind of consolidating that and making that work through you you'd be wonderful at the creative ideas you don't really want to look after the business aspects of it that's not you have some problems with that sort of area of things the other thing is because you're so apollo-esque there's this sort of divine masculine type of energy coming through apollo it's you know there are other asteroids that are more divine feminine for inspiration but apollo is like a sun king is like that kind of energy you Dealing with the feminine side of your nature and that kind of thing, the more receptive energy, that causes you more sort of issues. So the sort of psychic sort of stuff, even though I think you're highly inspirational, the sort of feminine stuff and where you need to sort of like dim your light a bit with the lunar eclipse and, and let things wait and take time is just hard. It's like the insp you're all about the inspiration, the idea, not so much about the longer term growth and nurturing of the idea. And so that's that's the kind of tension that's operating in your in your sort of like soul star map. So let's have a look with another astrology deck. 
using what again works and what doesn't work and then maybe what could be a bridge between the two for you the house the 11th house Taurus okay so yes your mind quick quick as very strong mercury probably in your chart the third house probably works very well for you you know whatever sign is in the third house and how you communicate works extremely well for you this is all how quick you are and your potential and all of that sort of thing the idea that that is you would have you know 10 ideas before breakfast basically you're just one of those sort of people very mercurial quick mind what can be tricky is then connecting that with other people and the work that it takes to do that and being receptive to other ideas. You may sometimes, it's your vision, you know. I mean, you are able to love. There's no doubt about that. And you are able to ultimately collaborate and do things in community, but you like to be the inspirational. You want that role. So if there was sort of crowdsourcing of ideas and that sort of thing around the 11th house, probably not your happiest place. And you want to communicate your ideas, but you may have some challenges around things like social media and so forth for some reason. There could be some issues in the 11th house that are tricky in your chart to deal with. What brings it together is a joint idea about what this looks like in terms of how to create abundance, how to have the good life and that kind of thing. And getting a good balance between being a bit stubborn about what you want, but not letting that get in the way of having a really good outcome either. It's sort of like understanding the value of the time and the growth and, and, and the abundance that comes from that, but also being a bit stubborn about your, your vision. So that's probably the way to connect the two. Let's use tarot. So let's have a look firstly at what you know already about your soul map, like what kind of already kind of works well for you and you know, and then we'll have a look at what maybe is a bit more unconscious and driving you without you necessarily knowing and, and how that could be helpful to know it. So first of all, what do you know? Okay, you know you're unconventional. You know you have all the skills that you need and you really don't need all these silly rules, basically. <laughs> like, you know, this is the Uranian energy. You definitely know that. And, and you know that you're a master at what you do, therefore you can break the rules. You also know that you're not terribly happy around things like social media and communicating ideas too soon or to the wrong audience. So you've got a very good understanding about what's your right audience and how to protect your ideas and all that kind of thing. You feel, you feel a little bit emotionally stuck when it's all about what the, the, the general populace thinks or whatever. You're, you know, you, it makes me think of like Oscar Wilde turning up in you know, a country that he travelled to and they said, do you have anything to declare? And he said, I, only my genius. There's that kind of sense. And I'm not, I'm not saying that, that you aren't. I actually think you do have a, a real genius, actually. I think that's true. But I think that sharing it, like you know, you know that you have some issues around that, about finding the right people to collaborate with. You can find the right lovers, I think. And you can ultimately, there is a capacity to do something for the community. But you know that sharing the, the this phase, which is your phase, you know, the inspiration, the ideas with crowdsourcing, you, you don't like it, you know that. You know that it actually slows things down and you don't like that. So let's see what you don't know. Okay, what you don't know is that there's other iconoclasts around that you could connect with. And I think at least one of them will actually, you will know eventually because it will come through love. With an ace of, of cups and an ace of pentacles, there's definitely a sense of there is something through the heart and through manifesting something through that, the, the cycles of the heart, all the sort of Piscean energy and that sort of thing. And then the, the slower growth of time and so forth, that Taurus energy. There is something to be said for that. And there are others who can collaborate with you who are equally different. But it's it's like, I feel like it's the Gestalt effect where the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. It's not that they're the same as you. They're just different in a different way. And therefore, it doesn't have to dim your star. You can find others like you, but you're all bringing something different to the mix. And that's where you get the collaboration. And that's where you're ultimately 
will open up this six where the, the real collaboration and the real outcomes can occur. So there are people who are the right people to connect with. I just think that maybe you've been around people who were slower than you or very much into power and control, but there are others like you. And Spirit says they will come in with a double uh, ace there. There's a blessing around that. Okay, so let's have a look at what might be some past life energy that is having an impact on this. So it's meant to be like sort of recent past lives that, that your soul map is is sort of being formed by and that might be informing some of both what you really want to do and you're, you're easeful with and also where there are the kind of more difficult aspects to deal with for you. And this one fell out, so I'm going to put that down. Mm, that's interesting. That one came up before, as did that. That's interesting. All right. Now, what's really interesting about this pile three is that three of these cards, I'll get to these, but three of these cards are all about slow growth and the material. They're about, in various forms, creativity and design and all the things that you're all over, but they're all about things that have a lasting, they have cycles of nature in the garden and, and so forth, and the earthy energy, that Taurian energy. They're about architecture, building, the legacy of buildings and so forth. And it's about carpentry and so forth. I think that you've spent some lives doing some of this around that which was more earthy. And I feel it's almost like there's a sense for you, I've been there, done that. This is why I want to do this other thing. I want to like come up with Uranian sort of ideas about like the new and AI or I want to you know be a singer or whatever all of which is fine there's no reason why you can't You've got, you're a multi-talented person but I think that some of this issue this frustration that you have is that to some degree that's more in that more a past energy and when I see knighthood and mind civilization together knights always kind of sacrifice to some degree for others and for their community in some way so I feel like and Mayan civilization I mean you may literally live in Mayan civilization but both the Mayan and the Aztec civilizations had sacrifice so I feel like this is allegorical I feel like you put a lot of that sort of artistic and inspirational skill into things that were that took more time and that, that served the community and the powers that be or that you know we're more in the kind of nature and less in this sort of incredible inspiration so I think that what's going on why that energy is tricky for you is that you really don't want to have to go back and do that again and you probably don't need to I think what spirit is saying is that you'll find others who maybe do have that that might be part of this group that's that's the key it's to find others it's that that that's what they want to do so let's look at some astrology energy around this life that can sort of help taking into account what might have created some of this tension with past lives in the, the soul map of your soul going through lives. What astrology energy could help you in this life? Waning crescent moon, releasing control of some things. Yeah, you can't control everything. Sometimes things do take time. Seventh house, so a love relationship. And you are good at that. That is probably the key for you. The moon, allowing all that Pisces moon emotional energy in a bit. It's not all just about the brilliant ideas. It's also about the heart. The 11th house. So the thing that you actually find a bit difficult around crowdsourcing, somewhere in there you'll find the right people. It's how you ask the question. And trine, it will be easier than you think. So let's have a look at what planets are in trine. Take a little while to get to a planet. Chiron. So something that you are healing in yourself. And Pluto. Yeah. There's a healing, there's a wound around power. There's a wound around other people controlling what your creativity is, putting the, the clock on it, telling you what could be done and what is, is what needs to be done and all of that kind of thing. And, and, you know, probably having done all this sort of stuff for the powers of the world before, that's why we've got the Alpha Draconians. But there is a way to, to heal that wound. You can, you can revolutionise and move on from that using your skills, but also the right connections. And using the 11th house in a way that works for you. 
Okay, so to finish up, I just want to get some spiritual sort of advice for you from three different decks. Firstly, the golden path. So what could be a golden, the energies that could be golden for you in terms of your individual star map or soul map. Listen to your heart. Yeah, there's got it. There's a key to this in a relationship or in love or in what you love, you know, and, and understanding that on a, a broader level and intuition. So that sort of inspirational energy, use that as intuition and connect to the moon, like connect to that. Like you're, you're kind of with Pisces and so forth, a little bit pushing that away. It's all about the ideas and the electric and the new, but you are also highly intuitive. And if you let that work for you rather than making it part of what you feel slows it down or overwhelms the, the brilliance, then, then you actually can find the right connections more and, and bring it all together more. So I'm just using another deck for some other sort of astrology and sacred symbol type energy for you. Scorpio. So your, your capacity you know, around getting to the depths is important. And that's also the relationship energy. Water, yeah. And air. Okay, it's sort of understanding. And maybe Scorpio in a way is, is, is sort of like the... Uh, the way to bargain with the universe, if you are, if you have a bit of a problem with water energy around Pisces, it feels a bit vulnerable. It feels a bit that you're more at other people's beck and call and you're not, you're not being able to go and be your brilliant self. Then maybe Scorpio is the water energy to use. Use Scorpio planets if you have them, Scorpio season, to, to be really able to get to the depths of understanding what is necessary in this to, to make something work and to bring your sort of mental energy into, into being. And what is power, like to really understand what is an illegitimate power sort of energy. Okay, so to finish off, we're going to get a card from the Lantern Path deck. So this is a light in the starry, starry night for you to, to guide your, your soul, your soul's navigation. Part three. Emotional energy. Emotions are messages to be met with appropriate attention action and gratitude yeah so you are going to need to connect a little bit more with your emotions you i think you connect them some somehow to a lack of control and to be overtaken by time but you do have the love nature i think that is what's going to help you connect and connect to the moon and your intuition but that is as important as the sort of divine inspiration that you have with the apollo energy you have all the skills you need but you do need to to be happy with the emotional side of things and also with the material side as well. So I hope that that resonates for you, Pile 3. I hope it's helpful and you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like the video and subscribe. And if you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear about it. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings. Welcome, Pile 4, to your reading. So I'm a little bit sort of struggling for space here, so it's a little bit cramped. But these cards are around what is working well in your sort of soul map, you know, beyond your astrology chart, but sort of astrological and other sort of spiritual energies and so forth that work really well for you. And the ones here that are a bit more challenging, which doesn't mean they're bad. It just means that they're more challenging. They're not, and even when they, and some of them here, like the Trojan horse is a, a tricky or difficult energy, but even where something could be potentially a positive energy, like sort of emotional energy with water, it could be suggesting that that is a little bit trickier for you than for other soul so to speak so the thing that interests me here to start with is that you were drawn potentially or in any case you've come to the reading that has uranus which is one of the very remote and dif dif distant planets so there's a sense of the great change energy that goes with uranus but also at a bit of a distance and so forth with this card so you are able to get that distance perspective that allows change it goes very well for you but the kind of more plutonic very deep transformation is something that is a little bit so it's what's happening with you is that, that that while you can have distance and perspective change operates well for you when it's very personal and i'll get to this you can lose sight of yourself a bit it's sort of like you can really do change a lot with other people but for change for yourself you, you you're not even sure what your true potential is you know what you could achieve you're worried about some of the sort of elements that are around and how to set your intention so we'll get to that but yes on a distant level when things are like distance perspective philosophical change all of that you're very very good at that and you can bring in 
with that Uranian energy again, with Uriel, abundance. So you're very good at change energy for yourself in your life to bring in abundance. You may well make money out of change types of work in one form or another, or the original or the new, but also bringing balance to organisations, places, people and so forth with the golden ratio. The golden ratio is that sense of the perfect balance of nature, the mathematical balance of nature that creates symmetry, that creates beauty. So you have this sort of sense about what creates abundance and beauty in nature and you have a very good detached way of looking at that. Therefore, things like love, interestingly enough, on its most romantic and beautiful level is relatively simple for you. Venus and Mars are probably well aspected or work well in your chart. That That is all all good when it is beautiful when it is in balance and to some degree when you're a little bit distant from it so you it's like a romantic ideal you would have your soul would have loved courtly love in the nightly ages where it was all about poetry and the quest and so forth doesn't mean that you don't have love in this life but but there is an interesting sort of balance of beauty around relationship love and creativity it's all very beautiful and defined and and you know and it's easy where things are easy and beautiful you can feel very comfortable in all the sort of change energy that that brings into your life and therefore very happy with sort of romantic love with the partnerships with others but you do have the wish for freedom so the uranian energy is kind of operating a bit with sagittarius with freedom but where there is a sense of beauty around philosophy around values around what it is to love you're very much that. You're the romantic ideal, I think. You are the romantic poet. You are the romantic character in a, in a, a, a movie or a book. You, you're definitely extremely comfortable in all of that. Anything that is beautiful, anything that is balanced, anything that is about design, you're very, very good with that. And there's a lot of easeful energy for you. Where you find it tricky with the Trojan horse is where things are not what they appear. So one of your potential Achilles heels might be that if something looks very beautiful you may want to say you know truth is beauty and beauty is truth that 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 poem I think I'm not sure who who wrote that but that that concept but sometimes things aren't what they appear so there's a little bit of an Achilles heel and when you're very emotionally connected to the beauty of something you may feel that you could be tricked in some way you're always looking to the potential so you're always looking to what is beautiful and can grow. And, and it's a lovely energy. Like it's very, very appealing energy. But, but there is a little bit of a shadow here where you're a bit worried about, you know, could you be tricked? So you find it a little bit hard to set your intentions fully. You're good at the romantic stage, but setting the intentions and bringing it home with the IC, the Imam Kohli here, which is the, the base level of your chart, the IC of your chart, that's who you are at home. So really finding a home for yourself, finding where this sort of beautiful romantic dream can be brought into being is, is a little bit difficult and you feel that your emotions might cloud the purity of your vision to some degree. And then if you get into the really deeply intense relationships and the deep intense transformation, you really worry then about whether you've actually lost your sight you know, of where you're going with the moon being void, of course. So you are someone who likes a little bit of a t detachment, but, but the theory and the sort of beauty and the poetry of love and connection and, and creativity. And you like change on that level. But you don't like it if it gets too deep and makes you wonder about whether or not you're tr seeing things truly and whether or not you're, you've actually understood the potential. So there's a little bit of a kind of a push-pull around change for you. It's philosophically wonderful, but when it gets a bit messy with emotion, you, 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 that doesn't make you feel at home. You're not happy with that. So let's have a look at what could bridge this. So we're going to use a different astrology deck. We're going to look at what's working, what is more challenging, and then what might be the bridge between the two. Second house. Yeah, Venus, okay. And Sagittarius. Okay, so Sagittarius, like the good thing about that is that some of what is easy for you, some of what is natural to you is, is really the solution. It's finding the freedom around this the freedom to be truly yourself the freedom to go through change without feeling you're going to lose your way or be tricked but the venus energy here the love energy the beauty energy is is also that's where you sort of feel you can be tricked so the thing that you love most the beauty of things is also an energy that you don't fully trust so that's why you want the distance 
But this is saying that you have the capacity to find what you want in terms of a balance in values and so forth and bring things into your life that you want and bring the right relationship in, you know, with two and two here. You can do that. You just need to find the one that allows you to be the, the romantic poet, you know, it allows you to have that freedom that doesn't, that isn't so intense that it makes you feel off course in some way or that you've been beguiled. It needs to be something which is beautiful, but a little bit distant. And, and, and I'm not saying that that is an unloving relationship. I'm saying it's, it's a love nature or a love pattern. You need to know that you are not being overwhelmed. You are not someone who wants the scorpionic type of love relationship that it fully transforms you and, and leaves you weak at the knees. You want the one that, that fits your values and so forth. And that gives you freedom and gives mutual freedom. So I feel this is very much, your soul is very much about finding the right love connection and finding the capacity for your vision of beauty and the reality of beauty and what that means in your life to find that in balance. So let's have a look with tarot a little bit more detail. Let's ask what you know about your soul map and then what you also don't know that could be useful. Or what might be unconscious is patterning that you don't know that could be useful so firstly what you know what you kind of are aware of within your own current natal chart or all of what we've been talking about here that you sort of know okay so you know that it's part of your destiny to have to have a great love, to have something that is a really good connection. You know that you have power in that connection, in that love, that it will be easier than for some to do that and so forth. Maybe because you're not addicted to the really Plutonian difficult relationships, because it's certainly true in our culture that you know, we have lots of movies and books that make us think that you know love has to be painful i don't think you think that at all i think you think love should be beautiful and philosophical and delicate and so forth and in a weird way that might be exactly one of the reasons why you will get the love that you want because you you do understand it doesn't have to be painful and transformative just to be passionate and important and so forth so you know that there is a strength that you will get from that and your vision of love strengthens you as well. But you also know that you haven't fully formed all of the aspects of it. You're avoiding some of the emotional stuff. You, you kind of get that that's the case, that, that that's fine. It's about the passion and the creativity and so forth. I don't think you're too concerned about that, but there is probably a little bit of a hint from spirit that it's worth knowing what, what it means on an emotional level, that the emotions don't have to take you down to Pluto or make you void, of course, feeling like you no longer understand who you are. You can actually feel those emotions if you've defined them a bit more. So let's ask what you don't know, what you're not realising about your energies and what could be useful for you to know. Okay, <laughs> so having just said that, you know, like to some degree not wanting the kind of, you know, Wuthering Heights type of relationship is probably going to work well for you. It is saying that what you don't know is whether you could be trying to like walk on eggshells and, and keep everything at that very sort of emotionally harmonious point of view and that, that, that sometimes you do need to get into the murkier areas of the moon for love. It doesn't mean it has to be full on Pluto, transformative, twin flame healing or whatever. But it does mean that you, you need to understand that, that you might have put a few ring fences around the relationship to keep it in the romantic phase rather than in the, the fully connected phase. And that in doing that, you're cheating yourself, even of what your vision was to some degree. And it's hard for you to, remember we had the IC was difficult to find yourself feel at home. It's hard for you to feel committed to that without going into that. So I think that the spirit is just sort of gently nudging you and saying it's fine to not want to, to go through the fully transformative relationship. There's no reason why your soul needs to do that. You've actually got a very good vision of what love is and beauty is and it should be easeful for you. But don't don't have it so sugar-coated that it's always about the romance and it's hard when you get into the real work. That, that's what this seems to be talking about. So let's have a look at some past life energy to see what might have created this particular tension for you in this life. 
And I'm going to look at this kind of more allegorically than, than literally, but we'll see what comes up. Family. Authority figures. Oh, imprisonment and slavery. Africa. Mind civilization. That's come up for quite a few. I think there's an interesting energy coming up in these readings. The way I'm reading Mayan civilization, I mean, you could literally have lived in a Mayan civilization. That's perfectly possible. But I actually think for this, it's picking up the sort of energy of sacrifice. So I think that there may have been a lot of sacrifices that you did for family. Maybe you even in one situation felt very much imprisoned by a particular family what was required from your family all of that sort of stuff there might have and there might have been a deep wish for liberation but that that was potentially quite tumultuous and so forth you could literally also have gone through some form of slavery so that distance and that sort of let it be about the the, the beauty and not about what could be really transforming and really power oriented could be part of it but i feel like this is really saying that possibly you're, you've had some lives where you've sacrificed some of your vision for family and for what the world expects of you and so forth, and you felt as though that stultified you in some way. It was too much of a sacrifice. So this time around you're trying to keep it all at the beautiful level rather than in some of this messier stuff where you're working out what relationships really are about. So let's have a look at what astrology is around you in this life more directly that could help you given that kind of background and this sort of tension that you're dealing with. Full moon, so the harvest, being able to reap the harvest, and find home. You are meant to find your home. So, you know, the IC will be, will be sorted out. You will find a home, and I think you will find love and you will find a family. You are meant to, to harvest that in this life. Mars, it takes action, not just thought third house and it takes communication not just sort of like not just love poetry though i think you're probably very good at that but it's also around communication on the sort of really deeper issues that, that create a home and the fifth house yeah love your this life is about love for you but it's about kind of reconfiguring maybe where you felt that family and home and all that was too constrictive and and too tumultuous in some way and and sacrificial and now finding that better balance and so forth being able to be truly yourself in that but also feel truly at home so okay given all of that let's just get some spiritual energy to help you on your pathway for your soul's star map pile four so firstly from the golden path some energies that might be helpful i am truth and don't compromise okay so I think I was picking up that sort of poetry about truth being beauty and beauty being truth, that kind of that saying. There's something about that. There is, there is something that is true about this and there is something that is the golden ratio. So don't lose that in all of this. You don't have to give up your vision of love. You just have to be prepared to look at the reality of it on the longer term to find it really and land it in the longer term. But don't compromise. You have very high standards and you should keep those. The only way you'd get tricked is if you compromised, really. So it, it is it is looking for the person who is also at your level and, and wanting to be with you in your vision of love. Let's use a different deck that picks up some other astrology energy sometimes, sacred symbols and figures and so forth for you. Saturn. Crone. Wow, okay. Mars, Mars again. So this is kind of saying in a way that you're making yourself almost old before your time. You do need to, if it's all theoretic and it's all kind of kept in that sort of space, you're kind of almost denying yourself some of the passion and so forth. I think don't deny yourself the passion in, in the wish to avoid the, the transformative or the, the difficult energies or whatever. Saturn used well, and I think for your energy it would work well can give you the structure and can give you that sort of resilience and the crone can give you the wisdom but don't use both of those as very kind they feel very head oriented and you know, uranus feels kind of head oriented as well you do need to to act as well that it, it's not just observing the beauty and kind of almost commemorating it for posterity it's also being in your life and being in your love 
So last but not least, I'm going to draw a card from the lantern card for some light on the sort of starry, starry night. And that is your star soul map. Oh, four. Oh, this came up for somebody else. Emotional energy. Emotions are messengers to be met with appropriate attention, action, and gratitude. Yeah, so don't don't deny the emotional, the water elements, because you're worried that it's tumultuous. You will actually bring in the right sort of person where it isn't and where you can feel at home, but you have to allow that in for the true richness of this to occur. Your life path, your soul's journey, your star map at this point is about connecting this deep sense of love and poetry and romance to something that can make you feel at home and you can do it but you're the one who's getting in your own way to some degree so allowing that in not compromising your standards and knowing that you have the clarity is the key to do it so i hope that that resonates for you pile four and i hope you enjoyed the reading if so please like the video and subscribe and if you care to share in the comments i'd love to hear about it otherwise i hope to see you in future readings